USC, can they enter the Big Ten and shock the world? That's coming up in this video. All right, I just got off uh, watching the Michigan football live on the Voice of College Football with John DiAdamo, TJ Ronan, and Ferris Khan, and all the chatters in there. We have, we're over 100 tonight. Uh, I don't get paid by them. I just love the channel, so go support that, like that, share, subscribe with other people. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're... USC people, you got Tim Prangley, you got Tony Altimore, who's awesome, and all of those. I hope that I'm not interrupting one of, or publishing this video during one of their uh, breakdowns or videos of your team, because I wouldn't want to take away from their shine. Uh, I am the Dependent Fanatic here. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel if you are uh, returning and if you have subscribed thank you just a little bit away from 300 subscribers that's pretty cool uh, uh, back and forth here the last couple days I lost a couple gained one so here we go we're talking USC and what can they do Lincoln Riley is the amazing offensive guru right uh, Tore up the Big 12 at Oklahoma. Tore up the Pac-12 in year one. Uh, the Pac-12 got better in year two, didn't they? Man, just before they all got dismantled. And now USC is going into the Big 10. And I don't think that... Listen. I think... I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Check your Wi-Fi network connection by... Yeah, well, that's because I have the internet off, you dumb. Whatever. Another interruption. Man, technology. Uh, USC, Lincoln Riley, has to come into this conference uh, being able to possess the ball on offense. They like to strike like lightning, and there is one exception in this conference over the last couple of decades that has been able to do that, and that is Ohio State. Everyone else, you're going to have to work the way your way down the field to score and play great defense in this conference. Uh, maybe you're an exception. Who knows? We'll see here in year one. Lincoln Riley started at Texas Tech in 2003 and worked his way up until he got his first offensive coordinator gig at Eastern Carolina in 2010. Then in 2015, he went to Oklahoma as offensive coordinator uh, until Bob Stoops retired. And in 2017, he was Oklahoma's head coach uh, until USC hired him in 2022. Oklahoma... Uh, at Oklahoma, he went 55 and 10. He had two losses every year, one in the regular season, and he lost his bowl game. <laughs> well, he won one of those bowl games, but uh, at USC, same thing. So 19 and 8 at USC, he has to figure out that you have to help your defense out by marching the ball down the field, being posing on uh, offense, physical. Especially in the Big Ten. Uh, instead of just this high-flying, thinking that you're going to score a touchdown every every drive in one play, I, I don't think that's feasible here in the Big Ten. So, will his philosophy change? Who did he hire as offensive coordinator? Josh Henson started in 1998 coaching as a high school assistant. From 1999 to 2004, he was tight end coach at Oklahoma State, which is his alma mater. Uh, and then from 2005 to 2008, he held the same position at LSU. The, then Missouri hired him uh, as offensive coordinator and O-line coach. So it was his first offensive coordinator gig in 2009. Henson went back to Oklahoma State in 2016 as O-line coach, uh, and then the same role at Texas A&M in 2019. Then USC hired him as offensive coordinator and O-line coach in 2022. And so 
he's I mean he's had some good I don't understand the big hoopla about either one of these uh, coordinators but uh, you know it's a USC is very very different culture where it's show you know it's a show it's entertainment it's not life and death it's we want to make everybody happy and um, that's just how I feel about it as a Michigan fan don't hate me USC fans but you have a lot of other things to do in California in Michigan we have a lot of things to do all seasons as well but uh, Michigan football is we bleed the, the blue we bleed blue so I know you have a lot of fans that do too and most of you are watching right now but Danton Lynn started in 2014 at the New York Jets as a uh, what do they call it? a seasonal a seasonal interim uh, and then he bounced around the NFL for a while as an assistant until he was safety's coach for Baltimore under John Harbaugh in 2021 then UCLA hired him uh, as DC in 2023 now he is your DC so you liked what he did in one year under Chip Kelly who's no longer there enough to poach him away from your rival and make him your own hey props to that hey Michigan had a running back coach that we took from Ohio State so but it wasn't defensive coordinator. This guy, I don't know, a lot of time in the NFL, what what does he know about college defenses, especially Big Ten defenses uh, and, well, offenses? He's going to go against the offenses, but you got to have that type of defense if you want to win in the Big Ten. That's just my opinion. Let's talk players uh, in the, on the offense and then the defense, and then we'll go through the schedule. And we'll figure out a floor and a ceiling for USC here in year one in the Big Ten. USC depth chart 2024. Miller Moss is your guy, it sounds like, redshirt junior. 45 of 65 last season. Uh, passes. 71%. 681 yards, which is 10.5 average per completion. And he had seven touchdowns to just one interception and mop-up duty for uh, Caleb Williams. Jaden Maiava is a transfer from UNLV. He is a redshirt sophomore. He had 224 pass, uh, completions on 353 passes, 64%. He had over 3,000 yards, 85 more to be exact, and... 8.7 average, so he's a dink and dunker guy, but he had 17 touchdowns, but he had 10 interceptions. He is a runner, though. 73 rushes for 277 yards last season. 3.8 average is all, but he had three rushing touchdowns. So you have a couple of pieces there in the quarterback room. At running back, Woody Marks is a transfer from Mississippi State. Uh, he only, he's a redshirt, uh, senior. He only had 121 carries for 573 yards. That's a good average, 7.7, 4.7. Uh, but he only had four rushing touchdowns. He also had 23 receptions for 167 yards, 7.3 average, and two touchdowns receiving. Backing him up as Quinton Joyner. A sophomore who had 18 carries for 125 yards, 6.9 average, and he had a touchdown. So the stats are not there coming back for uh, USC in the running back room. You do have a pretty good tight end, but no depth. That's the theme here on this offense and really the defense is no depth. The starters are pretty good. You got to have depth here, uh, proven depth. Don't rely on freshmen or sophomores that haven't done a damn thing. If you know you want, if it's all you got, then yeah, you got to go let them play and see what they can do, which is going to, 
I think USC goes nine and three this season. I'm just gonna say it. Uh, I think they lose to Notre Dame. I think they lose to Michigan and somebody else. Where was it? Uh, I think they beat Penn State at home, but there was someone else that you're going to lose to. Here we go. LSU week one, a neutral site. So just get that out of the way. But at tight end, you got Lake McCree back, a redshirt junior. 26 catches, 262 yards, 10.1 average, and one touchdown. At wide receiver, you got uh, at the X position, Deuce Robinson, a sophomore, 16 catches, 351 yards. That's a 21.9 average and two touchdowns. Makai Lemon will back him up at the X, a sophomore as well. Six catches, 88 yards, 14.7 average. Jaden Richardson backs all them up, a redshirt senior. Or does he back them up? He's probably the starter, maybe. A transfer from Tufts. University, 46 catches, 830 yards, 18 average, 13 receiving touchdowns. So will he be able to beat out Deuce Robinson for the starting role here? And then uh, at wide receiver Z, you got Kyron Hudson, a redshirt junior, 17 catches, 189 receiving yards, 11.1 average per reception, and two touchdowns. Jacoby Lane is a sophomore backing him up. Seven catches for 93 yards, 13.3 average, and he had two touchdowns. In the slot, you got Zachariah Branch back. Uh, as a freshman, he went 31 catches for 320 yards, 10.3 average, two touchdowns, nine carries for 70 yards, 7.8 average, and one touchdown. He will be a sophomore upcoming this season you're that's it that's your offense <laughs> that's your returning production normally i go at least half a page uh for all of these national title contenders and you are short a couple so uh, all of this is behind a pretty good offensive line but like i said depth you got a little bit of it, but uh, it's not proven. You got experienced upperclassmen that are not proven. Uh, left tackle, I, Elijah Page is a redshirt freshman. He was the backup left tackle last season. At left guard, you have Emmanuel Pregnon, a redshirt senior. He started at left guard last season. So you have one starter back, actually two, because at center, Jonah Monheim, I think, has moved to center as a redshirt senior. He started at left tackle last year. So he moves to center, which allows Eliza Page to go to left tackle. And then at right guard, Alani Noah is a sophomore. He was the backup left guard last season. He moves to right guard starter. And at right tackle, Mason Murphy, a redshirt junior, was backup right tackle last season. So he's still in his position ready to take the reins. Backups, left tackle, Tobias Raymond is a redshirt freshman, so could he, I only bring him up because Eliza Page wasn't a, a starter. Could he vie for that role there at left tackle? At left guard, Gino Quinones, Quinones is a redshirt senior, so he should be good, experience depth for you. And then center Killon, Killian O'Connor is a junior. Now also on offense, you have some committed players that are not quite enrolled yet, according to 24-7 Sports transfer uh, page. Wide receiver Jay Fair is coming in, junior. Transfer from Alabama or Auburn, excuse me. 31 catches, 324 yards, 10.5 average, and two touchdowns. Wide receiver Kyle Ford, transfer from UCLA. I uh, had 22 catches for 236 yards, 10.7 average, and one touchdown. Why all the wide receivers? You gotta get you gotta get to the ground. You gotta pound and ground and pound here in the Big Ten. Telling you, telling you, you can try to do it like Ohio State is. You might break through here and there. 
but goes better the Michigan way. <laughs> Telling you. Now, let's talk about your defense. The defense that I've been told that should be much better this year than last year probably should be uh, at D end. You have Nate Clifton, a redshirt senior, a transfer from Vanderbilt, who had 30 tackles, five and a half sacks, one interception, and one pass breakup versus the SEC opponents that he played against and is not count. Anthony Lucas is a junior who had 10 tackles. He backs up the DN. Now you have a rush position here, which I'm guessing is the other side. Uh, Jamil Muhammad is a redshirt senior. 47 tackles, six and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, and one pass breakup. And then backing him up, you got depth, Braylon. Shelby, a sophomore, had 18 tackles, two sacks, and one forced fumble. And then at nose tackle, Bear Alexander is a junior for you. Now in the second year here from Georgia, 47 tackles, 1.5 sacks, and two Past breakups last season. Kobe Pepe just makes backup. Uh, he just makes the backup list. Kobe Pepe, Richard Sr., had four tackles last season. And that's a cutoff. You got to at least have four tackles or four catches or four rushes to make this list. I do not include freshmen. I do not include any uh, unexperienced players, unproductive players. At uh, D tackle, you have Elijah Hughes, a sophomore, six tackles and half a sack. But while I'm at it, you have a couple of people on the defensive line committed, but not enrolled yet. At nose tackle, Gavin Meyer, a senior. A transfer from Wyoming had 26 tackles. And Isaiah Rakes, what's the deal with him? Was he at your school already and left and came back? He's a senior. Uh, transfer from Texas A&M. He had 17 tackles, one sack, one forced fumble, and one pass breakup for Texas A&M last season. All right. You have another player that is not uh, enrolled. But committed, and that's a cornerback, Greedy Vance Jr., a senior, a transfer from Florida State, who had 18 tackles, one interception, three pass breakups. Just want to put him in there so I do not forget about him. Let's talk about linebackers now, not very deep. Uh, you go four deep, and they're really, they're really, really good, these starters. Middle linebacker Easton Arnold Mascarnas is a senior. A transfer from Oregon State had 106 tackles last season. I think of these national title contending teams, rosters that I've gone through, that might be the most tackles of any of them. Uh, two sacks and two interceptions. Mason Cobb, now that doesn't always mean it's a good thing when you have a lot of tackles. Like I said, that means your defense is out on the field way too much. Mason Cobb uh, backs him up at middle linebacker. A redshirt senior, 85 tackles last season. One fumble recovery and one pass breakup. And then at Will, linebacker, you have Eric Gentry, 45 tackles. He's a senior, uh, 45 tackles a junior last year. One sack, one forced fumble, one interception, and four pass breakups. And then Ray Jean Davis is a senior backing him up. 18 tackles last season. So experience depth there on the uh, middle of your defense. Secondary, let's talk about that. We'll go work our way front to back. Nickelback. Jalen Smith is a senior who had 75 tackles, one sack, one forced fumble, and one fumble, uh, one pass breakup, excuse me, last season. Backing him up at Nickelback is Christian Pierce, a sophomore, seven tackles. At corner, left corner, you got John Humphrey, a transfer from UCLA, redshirt senior. 31 tackles last year, two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, two interceptions, and three pass breakups. Your secondary is just amazing here in your linebackers. You need to get better on the trench on defense. 
uh, to compete. I think you're a year away, but you're getting there, uh, and then, and you got to get you, these transfers are going to be gone next year. So who's going to step up? You know, you got to get with the recruiting here. All right, <clears throat> at right corner, Jacoby Covington is a redshirt senior. Twelve tackles, one interception, and one pass breakup. And backing him up to Carlos Nicholson, well, he might start. He's a transfer from Mississippi State, a redshirt senior. 42 tackles and two pass breakups last season. At free safety, Kamari Ramsey is your transfer from UCLA. Uh, you guys just poached them, didn't you? <laughs> uh -oh. A redshirt sophomore uh, had 40 tackles. One interception and four pass breakups last season. Bryson Shaw backs him up. A redshirt senior, 57 tackles and a half a sack. So who's starting there at free safety for you? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, strong safety, Achille Arnold is a redshirt senior. And he's a transfer from Oregon State. 62 tackles, half a sack, one fumble recovery. Two interceptions and six pass breakups. Zion Branch backs him up. A redshirt sophomore who had 22 tackles and a fumble, a forced fumble. Anthony Beavers Jr. Uh, is a redshirt junior. 18 tackles and one forced fumble, one fumble recovery. Did he get his own in the same game? Let me know. Let me know in the comments, USC fans. Uh, and, and then I did knuckle back, and we went through the committed. So, it's time to go over the schedule. What is your absolute floor? What is your absolute ceiling? I know I told you 9-3 and three is my prediction here in the spring, early. We still got to go through summer. We still got to go through fall camp. Go watch my top 25, uh, which is a prediction going into conference championship week. If you have not already, I'll put that in the card for you. Uh, schedule. You start on a Sunday versus LSU in a neutral site. This series is tied one-to-one -one all time. This is a question mark game for me. It's a toss-up. In other words, I I had US, uh, LSU winning this game in that uh, spring prediction top 25. Uh, but I have the right to change my mind here after, like I said, summer and fall. You, uh, Utah State is next at home. That is a win. Then you get your bye week in a perfect time before you go to Michigan in the big house. You've never been in the big house, but you do lead the series 6-4 to four all time. All them games are always in your neck of the woods, not ours. So this is exciting for me as a Michigan fan. It's a question mark. A 3-30 game on CBS. If it was noon, I'd feel a lot more confident about this. We own noon games, but you know, it's been interesting, Lincoln Riley, with that high-flying offense. Uh, but can your defense stop the run? Wisconsin uh, is I, at home. I gave you a win there. Uh, at Minnesota, you're going to win that game, but you've never been to Minnesota. So, again, it's new familiar territory or new territory for you, not familiar. Penn State at home is a question mark for you, but I had you winning that game. At Maryland is a win. Rutgers is a win. At Washington is your first familiar foe of the entire season, a, a team that came from your conference to the Big Ten with you. I think you win. Then you get your second bye. So you can lay it all out on the line there versus uh, the Huskies. <clears throat> out of the bye, you have Nebraska at home, and Nebraska is supposed to be better. I had them going 8-4, and four, but I think you win this game. And then you're at UCLA, Crosstown Rivals. You're better than them. They lost their coach. They You took all their good players. <laughs> You'll win that game. And then Notre Dame at home as a question mark, which I actually I had you losing i think as of now i think notre dame is deeper along the offensive and defensive lines than you are and that is huge in my opinion so the floor for usc i think is seven and five 
but that just that may just have to do with the Big Ten schedule that they have, which is the hardest. I had the hardest. According to last season's results, the teams they play is the hardest in the Big Ten, and it's top two or three in the nation. Go watch my schedule uh, ranking videos if you haven't done that too. So, yeah, it's going to be brutal, but I think your ceiling is very high. Like, and Riley does what I ask him and run the ball. Run the ball, help your defense. You could surprise some folks and go 11 and 1. I think that's your ceiling. You will at least have a lose to Michigan or Notre Dame in my mind. But in my spring predictions, I had both beating USC as well as LSU, like I said. So there you go. My breakdown for USC. Tell me what you think down below in the comments. And uh, fight on, but most importantly, go blue. Thanks, everyone. Remember to like the video, share, subscribe. Have a great night.